morning, CrossFit Marathon, and welcome to your Saturday workout. This is going to be a little bit of a long one. We're going to go over a couple of interesting movements. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves loosened up with some movement flow. We're going to do three movement flows per side. With a movement flow, you're going to start with an inch run with your feet wide apart, reach down, so your hands on the ground, walk out into that tall plank position, step forward with one foot into a Spider-Man lunge, try to get your shoulder to your ankle, drop that back knee down, reach up into a Samson stretch, drive those hips forward, squeezing your abs, reach down with the opposite hand of the leg that's in front, and reach up to the ceiling, get a good stretch in your thoracic spine, Bring that hand back down, come back up into that Spider-Man lunge, step back, step forward with the other foot, try to get that shoulder to your ankle, drop that knee down, sit up nice and tall into a Samson stretch again, driving those hips forward, squeezing your glutes, squeezing your abs, reach down to the ground with that opposite hand, reach up for the ceiling, Getting a good stretch in the thoracic spine, bringing that hand back down, stepping back out into that tall plank, and walking your hands back to your feet. After that, we are going to do 10 Cossack squats per side. So you're going to have a nice wide stance, toes pointing forward. You're going to sit back, keeping your knees behind your toes, driving your knees outside of your ankles, keeping your chest up as low as you can. Stand back up, and the same thing to the other side. Following that, we're gonna do 10 inchworms. So you're gonna reach down, get your hands on the ground, walk out into a plank, but now we're gonna do a push-up. Walk your hands back to your feet, keeping your knees as straight as you can for as long as you can, then reaching up to the ceiling. After that, you're going to do 10 hollow rocks. So you're going to get down on the ground. You want to squeeze your abs so your back stays flat on the ground. Reach up overhead, hands together, feet together. Then you're going to rock up and down 10 times. If that's too difficult, you can bend your knees or you can bring your hands to your side and bend your knees and rock like that. The next thing we're going to do is a little bit of movement prep, and you're going to need a shoe for this. The shoe is to work on the balance and stability for the Turkish getup. So we're going to do Turkish getup sit-ups, balancing a shoe on your hand. So you are going to have the shoe on your hand, make a nice fist. One arm out at 45 degrees, the opposite knee is bent. What you're going to do is you're going to squeeze your abs, Press that shoe up into the air, keeping it balanced, driving yourself up onto your arm, sitting up nice and tall, letting your eyes follow that shoe. Do it in a controlled manner, bring yourself back down. On the other side, it looks like this. So again, eyes follow the shoe, sit up nice and tall, prop up on that hand, sit back down in a controlled manner. Then what we're going to do is 10 Turkish get-ups, still balancing the shoe on our hand. So same starting position, but now once we do that sit-up, we're going to bridge our hips up off the ground, step that leg back through, sit up into a nice tall kneel, stand, still keeping our eyes on that shoe so it doesn't fall down and hit us on the head. Step back into a lunge, Reach that hand down for the ground, swing that back leg through, sit back, and come back down to the ground. After we do 10 of those Turkish get-ups, balancing the shoe on your hand, we're going to do a workout called Wrestling Collar Monkey. What you're going to need is some type of weighted implement and enough space around you so that when you're swinging it, you're not going to knock into something or somebody. So you can either use a kettlebell or you can use a backpack because that's what you guys voted on in the Facebook poll. This workout is a chipper 
It is 20 reps of each of the following movements. The first movement is going to be a push-up over the monkey. So you're going to have either your backpack, your sandbag, or your kettlebell on the ground. You're going to get into a nice push-up position right to one side of it. You're going to do a push-up so your chest hits the ground. Press up. Walk your hands over to the other side of it. Do a push-up. Walk your hands back to the first side. Scale for this is a push-up from your knees or a slow negative, controlling down, warming your way back up, and then walking over the bat. The rep starts and finishes on the same side of the bat. So you're going to start on the left side, come over to the right side, and finish on the left side. After that, you're going to do four count flutter kicks. For the flutter kick, you're going to hold the weighted object over your head. The further behind you, the more challenging it is. You're going to keep your core nice and tight, just like you did with the hollow rocks, so your back stays flat. Hold that object behind you with your knees straight. Without your heels touching the floor, you're going to kick like so. This is a four count exercise, guys. So what that means is you're going to kick four times for one rep. It's one, two, three, one. The scale for this is to either hold that weight closer to your center of gravity, the closer it is, the easier it is, or to put that weight down, have your hands underneath your butt, and do the same thing, or to simply hold your abs tight to your back flat on the floor, and march like so. After that, we are going to do plank pull-throughs. So you're going to have your weighted implement on the ground right next to you. You're going to be in that tall plank. You're going to pull that object to one side, switch hands, pull that object to the other side. Just like with the push-up over the bag, the rep finishes with the bag on the same side that it started on. So you have to pull it through each side in order for the rep to count. After that, we are going to do Turkish get-ups. You can choose to stick with the shoe if you really want to work on your technique. I promise you it's not easy. Or you can use your bag or the kettlebell. If you are going to use a bag, I recommend that you treat it like a sandbag get-up, which means that instead of holding that kettlebell straight up overhead or the bag, you're going to hug it to your shoulder and it looks like this. You start with that bag resting on your shoulder, hugging it with one hand, making sure you have a firm grip on it so it's not going to fall or hit you in the face. You're going to, again, press up, sit up into that nice tall position, keeping that bag right over your center of mass. Drive those hips up, shoot that leg back through, sit up into a nice tall kneel, stand, step back down, reach that hand down to the ground, kick that leg back out, and control yourself back down to the ground. On the other side, it looks like this. So you can see that my arm is wrapped around that bag, maintaining good control of it. The bag is staying mostly or the same spot in my center of gravity. I'm still looking up towards the ceiling. And I'm controlling the bag, or the weight for the counter. For a kettlebell, you are going to press this up overhead so it is the same exact things with the shoe. You're going to drive that kettlebell up, maintaining those active shoulders, pressing forward, keeping eye contact on that kettlebell. And you want to make sure your thumb is pointing backwards the whole time for the stability at your shoulder. Finish lowering that kettlebell all the way to the ground. The next thing we're going to do is sit-ups. You can do the sit-ups with the kettlebell or with the bag. This time, instead of holding the implement all the way behind you, you're going to hold it directly over your center of gravity. You're going to be in that good butterfly sit-up position. And as you do this, you want to pull that bag up, 
Keep it directly over your center mass. And control yourself back down to the floor. If you don't want to do that with a weighted object, if you feel like that's too difficult, you're going to do a regular butterfly sit-ups where you reach back, touch the floor behind your head, sit up, reach forward, touch the ground in front of your feet. After that, you're going to stand up and we are going to do 20 Russian swings. With a kettlebell, it looks like this. Chest stays up, back stays nice and straight. You're going to send those hips back, drive that kettlebell up to eye height using your hips. With the bag, unless you're very confident that the handle on the bag can handle the weight inside, I don't recommend that you hold the handle because it's going to be very, very short and you're going to end up dragging it on the ground. So you either want to hold on to the shoulder straps and the mechanics all stay the same or you can hold on to the body of the bag itself to work on your grip strength. Make sure you have a good solid grip. Keep that chest up, back straight. Drive those hips forward until the bag is just up at eye level. With this, make sure that no one gets in your way, otherwise you're going to clock them in the face with however much weight that you have in that bag, which would not be a good day. After that, we are going to do a high pull to a squat. With a kettlebell, you want to hold just like you would for a normal kettlebell, similar to the high pull, feet just outside of your hips, keep your chest up, drive those knees out. If you're going to pull up, drive those elbows up, but instead of letting that kettlebell come back down, you're going to pull up and catch it in a front rack position like you're about to do a goblet squat, because that's exactly what you're going to do. Then you're going to sit back down into that squat, and drive up, making sure that your knees stay behind your toes, your chest stays up nice and tall, and those elbows stay right in front of you. And from the side, it looks like this. And then, you're going to keep that weight nice and close to your body as you place it back down. Again, if you're using a bag, I recommend that you hold on to the body of the bag, work on your grip strength. You're going to pull up high, catch it, Again, in that front rack, make sure you have a good solid grip on it. Keep it right in front of your face as you sit down into that squat and then ride it back down into the ground. And from the front, it looks like this. After that, we are going to do halos. Halos with a kettlebell. The goal is to work on that core, keep yourself nice and stable. You're going to hold it in that goblet position with the bottom of that bell facing the ceiling. Have your feet about shoulder width apart. Take a nice deep breath, uh, breath and brace, and try not to move your body as you move that kettlebell around your head. With the bag, it is the same thing. Again, hold on to the body of that bag. Take a nice deep breath and brace. Squeeze your abs. And make sure that you're not going to crack yourself in the head with whatever weight you have inside. The last move that we have is going to be a clean and press. So the clean and press is going to look a lot uh, with the kettlebell like it was with the bag, like it was in that sumo deadlift high pull to squat. So you're going to hold on the top, you're going to clean, catch that front rack, Press that kettlebell up overhead, bring it back down, and then ride it back down to the ground. If the weight is very light, you may be able to muscle clean, but you also want to make sure you're getting that second dip underneath. So again, it looks like this. you to hold on to the body of the bag if you can. And it's going to look exactly the same. So you hold on to that body of the bag, you clean up, dip underneath the catch, press it up overhead, driving your head through the window at the top, and then lower it back down, and repeat. From the front, it looks like this. So 
that is wrestling a howler. It is 20 reps of push-ups over the bag, four count flutter kicks, plank pull-throughs, Turkish get-ups, sit-ups, Russian swings, high pull to squats, halos, and clean and press. And if that wasn't enough for you, we have a little bit of a cash out. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna accumulate five minutes in a low plank. In the low plank, you want your feet to be together so you can squeeze your heels, squeeze your glutes. You're gonna rest on your elbows, keeping your shoulders, your hips, your knees, and your ankles in a straight line. And every time you have to break from that plank, you're gonna come up into the high plank and we're gonna do 10 mountain climbers. So you're gonna either jump your feet up outside your wrists, or you're gonna step up outside of your wrists. After that, you're gonna do a little cool down. We're gonna do 10 reps of an exercise called the Jefferson Curl, which is very good for stretching out all of your back muscles. You're gonna have your feet just underneath your hips, and starting from your head, you're gonna curl down and try to roll your chin down your chest, segmentally rounding your back, reaching all the way down to the ground. You can pull yourself down a little bit by your toes. If you need a little extra stretch, then you're gonna segmentally curl yourself back up tall. We're gonna do 10 reps of that. And from the front, it looks like this, curling all the way down, reaching for the ground, pulling yourself a little bit closer, trying to keep your knees as straight as possible, and then reversing, curling your way back up. After we do 10 Jefferson curls, we're gonna stretch out our abs because this is a very big ab workout. And we're gonna do three rounds of 30 seconds of downward facing dog into that good pike position, driving your head through your arms, trying to keep your legs straight. You can cycle those heels down to the ground, get a stretch in your calves, followed by cobra stretch for 30 seconds, letting your hips drop down towards the floor, stretching your abs out, trying to sink a little bit deeper into that stretch with every breath. I hope you enjoy your Saturday workout.